Because I've seen you guys on uh, Viceland. There's like some uh, group from uh, uh, New Orleans. Yeah, Very that's not radical. us. That's not us. Yeah, I was going to say. Well, because if people die in their sin, they will go to hell. No, I know that. I'm just saying, do you think you'll change anyone's mind today? We're not out here to convince anybody. If this is the means of grace by which God... See, the means of grace by which God brings about salvation to the lost yeah, is through the preaching of the gospel. The Bible says, Absolutely. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. And he says in Romans 10, how will they hear unless there's a preacher? And how will there be a preacher unless there's one sent? And so he says, right here, I'm why? Because there's... I mean, people right walking by. Well, that wasn't going this morning uh, when we were here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was about to say, no, that's you, like, hey, uh, you can't even hardly hear it. Yeah, well, I got to face it that way. And not really, because the Bible says, see, again, we can't change your mind. We can't change anybody else's mind. God has to do that. God does it, right? So, and the Bible says that God's word will not return void. So even if there's conflicting noise across the street or people don't want to hear it, God will open the ears of those who are called to hear it. I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah that's cool. So we can't convince anybody, but the preaching of the words is the means by which uh, we're actually from Ohio. All of us. All of these guys. There's another group down there and up there, but they're from other places. Where are they from down there? Uh, they're from other places. They're not. We're not together with them. I know them, but we're not together. Because I've seen you guys on uh, Viceland. There's like some group from uh, uh, New Orleans. Yeah, that's Very not us. Radical. That's not us. Yeah, I was gonna say those guys are what we call the Pelagians. They're the they're the they're the angry street they're creatures. They're literally the complete. No, no, no. Yeah, no, they are. Cause like by saying these motherfuckers are going ham. No, they get pissed. They will literally yeah. attack you. Yeah, the, those guys are not the same as us. No, like, I, I would tell you right now, those guys aren't saved. They don't no. know Christ. No, like, like based on what they like, cause they did a like strict interview, like based on what they're preaching and saying. Well, they like, they believe in sinless perfection. They believe that they don't sin anymore. Exactly. Exactly. And that's not what the Bible teaches. Now, we're not supposed to keep on sinning. We're not supposed to, to live a life of sin, right? The Bible says if you're a drunkard, a liar, a thief, a blasphemer, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. But we're not saved because we stop doing those things. We come to Christ, and he changes the heart, and then he gives you new desires. So I no longer desire. I was in the military for, for nine years. All I used to do was curse and drink and, and go and party and all these things. I don't do those things anymore because God changed my heart. My desire isn't for those things. My desire is to please the Lord. I don't always do that perfectly, but my desire has been changed. So those guys say they don't sin no more. They don't do all those yeah, things. Exactly. That's that's not what we preach. Because that's, that's not what the Bible says. Like it's that, it's that, uh, I guess you got you say vulnerability. Like it makes you more human and easier to connect. Whereas they project like I'm a perfect human being. I never did anything wrong. Which is like I, well, like, we, I ain't gonna. We preach against sin. We preach what the Bible says. But what those guys do is they try to get a rise out of people. Yes. And then when somebody punches them, they say, persecution, persecution. It's not persecution. You're a jerk. Exactly. You know? Um, so there's a difference. But we're not going to shy away from what the Bible says. The Bible says all drunkards will have their place in the lake of fire. All blasphemers, liars, fornicators. So the Bible speaks against sin. And God says, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Exactly. And so we preach the truth. But you, you got to do it in grace. And ultimately, we know it's not us that saves people. It's God. God that does it through the preaching, he opens the hearts of people. He opens the ears exactly. to hear and the eyes to see. So God's the one that literally opens the door for them with himself. Yeah. yeah. To open up. You guys are just, We're just like, the means by which God uses, like a painter that's using a paintbrush to draw a portrait. We're just that means. We're that instrument that God uses to bring about salvation to his people. 
That's it's the way God works. The more people that way, the more it's just like attack. Like if we can connect like this way, it's a lot more personal, and I can understand. Whereas like some people are just like direct, strict. You're a sinner, and literally just like put you in a place that you're not. Whereas like if they literally talk to you through the whole thing, they literally show you what God's work is, and that's the thing. And what you guys are doing, people, he is not attacking anyone, he's not calling anyone out, he's literally just preaching what he is, and so are you. And so that's the beautiful thing about this. Yeah. What's your name, man? Uh, Brandon. Brandon, I'm Ricky. Ricky? Yeah, nice to meet you. My dad was in the military as well, so. Well, yeah. tell him thank you for his service as well. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's a lot. It's, uh, it's a lot of... He hasn't told me about it, but like I've seen and I know what exactly goes through. He served like 28 years, so it's a lot, a lot of mental stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And like trying to come home and be like a perfect person, it's hard. It is hard. It is hard. It's hard going. But even in, in, even outside of the military, it's hard for everybody in life. The reality is we're all born sinners because of Adam. Because Adam sinned in the garden, him being our covenant head. God is a God of covenant. So because he's our covenant head, we're all sinners and we're all guilty in Adam. That's why Christ came to be that second Adam, to be the one that those who believe in him are now no longer in Adam, but they're in Christ and they have eternal life. So so that's no matter what people go through in life, their circumstances, their, their whatever background they come from, we're all lost. We're all in need of a Savior. And Christ is that only one that can save us. Yes, exactly. A lot of people are lost. A lot of people try to find purpose in life. But at the end of the day, it's what you and God want. At the end of the day, God's going to show you the way. You just got to listen, believe, and follow the path. And whatever opportunities come your way and what you focus on, whatever the opportunity is, it'll be there. You just got to focus and listen to what you yeah. And you, and you listen through here. That's why this tracks the scripture alone. It's the word of God has to be the means by which we, we are communicating with God. We pray to God, but God communicates through his word. He's not giving no new revelations. He's not speaking to people individually and saying something that contradicts his word. We read his word and the spirit speaks to us through his word and convicts the heart when we're in sin and brings us to repentance. Exactly. I, I like that. I like that a lot better. It's like, when I was in college, I had a lot of people like go in the, like in college, so literally when I'm studying, like attack me personally about like you know different beliefs or what I'm doing and blah blah blah. It's just like like how they present themselves and how they come off. It's just like it's not inviting and it just makes me seem like I'm not like I, I wouldn't feel included with that. It just makes me feel like a, like, they make me feel like a bad person. Like obviously yes, we're all sinners, but yes, we can still repent for our sins and maybe uh, you know change and take a hand, like turn a hand to make ourselves better. All it has to do is just like make sure you find yourself with God. And be one with yourself and be one with God. You know, that's the end of the day. But I like this. I appreciate like everything you're doing. That's like a lot of people they seem happy. No one is fighting, no one is uh, well, I, I I mean people are gonna people do fight and people do get angry. The reason why, you know what the Bible says? You know what they did to Jesus Christ for preaching the gospel? They put him to death on a cross. Exactly. You know what they did to every single one of his 12 apostles beside Judas who hung himself because he was a traitor? You know what they did to all the other 11 apostles? They put him to death, except for John, who was boiled alive. They tried to kill him. They couldn't, so they, they put him on the Isle of Patmos. They abandoned him there. But all the disciples for preaching the gospel were hated. And Christ said, don't be surprised when the world hates you. They hated me for preaching the truth. The truth does make people angry. You tell somebody that thinks they're good, that thinks they're okay with God in their own mind, that apart from Christ, they're a, they're a sinner and they're going to die in their sin unless they turn to Christ. That makes a person angry. They don't like that message. They want a God that suits them. They want a God that that, that that they can create in their image, in their likeness, that will allow them to just say, well, God is love. He's not going to send me to hell. But the Bible says if you die in your sin, that's where you go. Right? So people do hate the gospel. And the Bible tells us that they will. Because they're going to get their own will or what they believe is true or what's not. Yeah. But every day it's good to like challenge what you think is real. It expands your mind, it expands what you know and what you believe is real. And like obviously what you're telling me, it's just like it's literally challenging the human mind of like, do you believe what you believe? 
There's another way. There's a reason why you act this way. There's a way to repent. There's a way to like figure out what the hell you're doing. And I appreciate that. Right? It makes sense. It makes sense when you explain it the way you do, and not like deliberate and direct. When you get down to a personal level, that's when you connect with people. But it's hard to connect to everyone on a personal level. So well, that's why we preach, and the preaching usually brings about conversations. Exactly, like what we're doing yeah. right now. And I really do yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah. God bless. God bless. Such things as homosexuality are wrong. Such things that out of the list that I just wrote are wrong.